In this tutorial we're going to look at creating some of the vectors that you can see here that represent the lion head door knocker. We're going to start by setting up our job, we're going to import a bitmap and then we'll be looking at how we can create good quality vectors using various tools in the software. We'll be discussing how we intend on using these vectors in the modelling stage of the project and then to finish we'll be looking at how we can organise our vectors into layers to keep the part organised. So let's just go and close this down and say so we're going to create a new file. In here we're going to set up our job size, in this case we're working with a width of 8 inches, height of 9 inches, I'm going to set Z0 off the top of the block material thickness that I'm working with is 1.5 I'm going to set my XY position to be in the centre of the part I'm going to work with a high modelling resolution I may even up that up to very high so that I have more pixels to work with and then I could go ahead and press OK So the first thing I need to do is import my sketch in order for me to trace over with some vectors To do that I'm going to go into File Operations I'm going to use this option here to import bitmap for tracing in the project folder I'm going to import linesketch.png and press open. I like the size that it is at the moment so I'm going to leave that as it is. If I wanted to I could go and right click here and then use the object properties option and I could look at increasing or decreasing the fading of my bitmap. In this case it's quite light as it is so I'm going to bring that down to 0% so I can have more visibility through my sketch. So let's press close. So I'm happy with that. So now we're ready to start creating our vectors. Now before I go and create any vectors, what I'm going to do to help myself is I'm going to pull out a guide. So I'm just going to click on the ruler here and then I'm going to pull out this guideline and bring that into the centre. You can see that at 0, 0.0 there. And the reason for that is as I'm working with a symmetrical part where I need to, I could just work with half of the uh, half of the lion head and anything that requires the same vector on the other side, I'll just simply create a mirrored copy over. So I'm just thinking of quicker ways for me to work through this project. So where I can, I'm just going to work on the one side. I'm going to start by using the polyline tool. So I'm just going to take that and this allows me to just draw straight shapes like you can see here. So I'm just clicking at various points trying to follow the shape of my sketch and then I'm just going to bring that up and then pin that in place and then to come out of the polyline tool I'm just going to right mouse click. And now what I can do is I can take that vector and then I can go into node edit mode. I could do node edit mode by pressing on this option here, so the node editing option, or I could use the shortcut key N on the keyboard to access the node edit mode. So you can see here we've got lots of straight points. What I'd like to do is change those into smooth shapes. So I'm going to press S on the keyboard to smooth all of those nodes. And then I'm just going to zoom in using the scroller of my mouse. And then I'm just going to start to create the shape to match that of my sketch. And this is where I just simply take the control handles and I can move those. Or I could take the nodes and move those in order to create to follow along with the sketch that I've got. Okay, so you can see we've got nice smooth shapes. Remember in that presentation we spoke about how important it is to have nice smooth um, spans between each one of those nodes in order for us to get nice smooth vectors and ultimately get nice smooth components. So I'm just going to move that over and then I could take this one here if I wanted to, I could delete this point, I don't need that there and I could go ahead and just smooth those nodes again and then pull on that handle, pull on this handle there so putting them into smooth nodes means that we're now working with bezier spans and bezier spans just allow me to have that bit more control over the shape of the vector so I'm happy with that, so that's OK. So then what I'd do is I'll come out of node edit mode by right mouse clicking. So now you can see my cursor's gone back to normal cursor mode. I'm then going to take that vector there. We're going to use this mirror selected objects option. 
and I'm going to flip that about job center also going to create a mirrored copy I'm going to flip that horizontal and then we could press close and then I'm going to take this one so that one's already selected hold down shift select this vector here and to use this option to join and then we're going to join that again so now we've got one closed vector at this stage what I would like to do is just flatten this top area off I don't really want this point coming down here so I'm going to go into node edit mode and I'm simply going to take that node if I just zoom in and I'm going to just lift that up a little bit and I'm going to take these two control handles just the control handles not the node and I'm just going to bring them down so that we straighten that out and now we've got a nice smooth shape and we can see that because our node has now changed to a smooth node so I'm happy with that so let's move on and think about other shapes another tool that we can use is this one here the draw curve option so let's just go into there now this tool works the same way as the polyline tool does except when we create a point it automatically turns it into a smooth point so you can see that there it's instantly creating these smooth points that we can work with okay so again I need to work with half so I'm just going to right click to come out of there and I'm going to take that into the mirror option flip about job center create mirrored copy flip horizontal press close and I'm going to take these two by holding down shift and I'm just going to join them together you can see here if I go into node edit you can see that my node is lower than my um, control nodes that's why we're getting this dip in here so if I bring this node up by just selecting just the node not the control handles I can bring that up and we can see now that we've got a nice smooth shape there so there we have the draw curve option okay, you can see we've got the same at the bottom so I'm just going to bring that down and now we can see we've got a nice smooth shape there so I'm happy with that so I just use this option here to uh, zoom to fit so we can see the whole screen there and we can start to think about another tool that we could use. So we're going to look at how we can utilise the shapes and to create different shapes here. So we're going to use the draw ellipse option. Now here we just simply draw ellipse. If I want to bring it thinner or bring it closer together I just move my mouse to the left. If I want to bring it up or down I just move the mouse up or down. Okay, so I'm just going to go with a shape that looks like this here. Okay, so at the moment it doesn't really look like anything. My intention is to draw this ear shape here. So I'm just going to right mouse click to come out of the ellipse tool. And then I'm going to go straight into node edit mode. If we just zoom in here so we can see the shape of our ear, what I'm going to do is just take the node, I'm just going to pull that over here, pull this node over here. So all I'm doing is just following the shape of the ear that we've got there, I'm just going to bring that over, pull that up, move that across and you can see straight away we've got a nice smooth shape that represents that ear and so sometimes it is quicker to work with things like the draw ellipse or draw circle to create shapes like these as you can easily edit them. So let's just come out of node edit mode by right mouse clicking and right mouse clicking again. I'm going to use this option here to zoom to fit so now I'd like to create the vector that represents the inner ear here. Now rather than drawing out a new shape, what I could do is make use of what I already have. So I'm going to take this outer ear vector, I'm going to select that to put it into transform mode. Holding down control and shift, I'm just going to drag any one of these handles and I'm just going to shrink that down. So holding down control means that we create a copy, holding down shift just scales that in proportion. And so now we can see we've got another copy here. Now if I go into node edit mode, we can see we've got the same number of nodes because we've just took a copy of the original vector and here I could just go ahead and tweak this. In this case I, I could just delete this node here so I could right mouse click say delete point and then I could work with what I have. Let's just alter that, bring that handle in a little bit more, move that one out and you can see we've got another vector in here um, and all we've done is took a copy of a vector that we already had in the job in the first place. So let's just zoom to fit. 
Now the vectors that we've created here are all closed vectors and the reason for that is that I'd like to use the create shape tool to model the various areas that we've got here. The create shape tool allows me to assign a profile along with an angle to any given closed vector hence why I've used these closed vectors here. I feel that the create shape tool will best represent these areas. Now moving on and thinking about the main what I would like to do is focus on the detail within the main, so picking up on all of the waves of each strand of fur or hair. And so in this case I feel that the two rail sweep would give me the best outcome for that look. And we'll look more on the two rail sweep in the modelling tutorial. So let's think about drawing the vectors for that. So I'm going to go back into the drawer polyline tool and we're going to take that and I'm just going to zoom in I'm just going to simply follow along the sketch that I've got here so I'm going to take this point here so click there to click up here bring that down and bring that over click down here click here and a shortcut to join a vector I could just press tab on the keyboard so now we can just close the polyline tool down and we'll go into that vector, let's go and node edit that, so we're going to node edit and I'm just going to take all the nodes except for the end node, so I'm just going to hold down shift and select that node there and then I'm going to smooth them. The reason why I'm not smoothing the ends is that I'd like those to remain um, at straight points and this will give the, me the ability to create these nice smooth shapes. So we could pull that out over here. You can see now we've got a nice point end there to the sort of tuft of fur that we've got. Let's pull that down. I could delete this node if I wanted to, so let's delete that. Let's pull that one up and then we'll just straighten that out. So again it's thinking about the quality of the spans between each node ensuring that we have nice smooth vectors flowing uh, through each one of those nodes. Again, I could delete this node if I wanted to, so let's just press D to delete that and I'm going to pull on that control handle just to give a nice curve between the two nodes here. And I'm just going to pull on this control handle and this one here to give me a nice curvature between each one of those nodes. And so if you haven't had a lot of practice with the drawing tools, there's lots of drawing tutorials available with the software to help you get some practice in. Now, as I said, we're going to use the two rail sweep to create our main. What I need to do is create two vectors. So I'm just going to simply cut this vector here by right mouse clicking and saying cut vector. And then I'm going to take this one here, right mouse click and say cut vector there. So now we have two open vectors. And so they will enable us to create two rail sweeps. So all we need to do now is create a cross section. We'll look at creating the cross section in the modeling stage. So let's just go and use the option here to zoom to fit. And then we'll look at drawing in another set of rails that represent this top area of the main here. So let's go back into the polyline tool. I'm just going to zoom in there. I'm just going to take this point here and I'm going to snap, I'm going to go down here to this point here. And I'm just going to go back up again and snap in place. And the reason for that is I can then control the shape of this by using the Bezier tool. So let's just right mouse click to come out of that. And then I'm going to click on that vector, go into node edit mode. I'm going to turn this span into a Bezier curve. So let's press B to Bezier. And then I have the ability to really control the shape of that vector. And you can see that there we get a nice smooth curve here. And I'm going to do the same this side. So B to Bezier and I'm going to pull on this handle here and then pull on this one here and then just keep tweaking with those control handles until I'm happy with the shapes that I've got. Okay so that's a good shape so let's go and cut those vectors again. So I'm just going to right mouse click here and say cut vector, right mouse click here and say cut vector. So now we've got two separate vectors ready for us to create a cross section and model the two rail sweep to create the top tuft of fur there. 
And so I'd carry on working through the main using exactly the same process that we've done there using the polyline tool and then node editing to smooth out those vectors and then cutting the shapes to create two separate vector rails. An important vector that we should really include right from the start is the vector that's going to represent that keyway, that mechanism uh, that allows us to slot the face on top of the base shapes that you've seen in the presentation. So to do that I'm just going to simply just draw a square and enter it uh, around somewhere in the middle of the face here. So let's just go over to draw a rectangle. Okay, I'm just going to use a square option and what I'm going to do is use radius external. So I'm going to have radius external of an eighth of an inch. Okay, now I intend to use a quarter inch tool, so I'm just going to use um, half of that, which is an eighth of an inch. Okay, let's just give that some dimensions. So we're going to go with a width of one inch, height of one inch. Let's press create. We can see that that's been added there. If I close that down, we can see we've got nice radius corners there so that my tool can get inside for when we pocket inside the bottom side of the face and the tool can go nicely around the outside when we machine the uh, top of the base shape. So let's just use this option here to zoom to fit. Now we're going to look at drawing up one more element of the design before we skip ahead and take a look at the finished set of vectors and we're going to look at drawing the handle. So you can see the handle isn't visible in our sketch, we actually haven't drew it within our sketch so I'm going to have to do this in the software by eye. To do that I'm just going to use the draw a polyline tool. In this case I'm just going to snap anywhere between uh, the sort of bottom of the face area here and the top of the nose here. I'm just going to go somewhere around here and then I'm just going to pull this out and then I'm just going to click once I'm happy with my position and then I'm just going to pull this down snap to the guide at the bottom somewhere roughly around here and then I'm just going to click to position that right mouse click to come out of the polyline tool and then I could go into node edit mode where I can really alter the shape of this vector so here I'm just going to go and right mouse click and say to change that span into a bezier span and now I have a lot more control over uh, the way, the curvature of this vector. So I'm going to take both of those control handles and I'm simply going to just pull that out a little bit and bring that down until I'm happy with the shape that I've got. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that shape. What I might do is just take this node here and just using the right arrow key, just reduce that down so bring that in nicely here. You'll notice that the control handle is lined up with its corresponding node here. And the reason for that is that when we create a copy on the other side, we're going to have a smooth transition between the two uh, vectors or between the two spans. OK, so I'm happy with that, so let's just right mouse click to come out of the polyline mode, sorry, the node edit mode, and I'm going to take this vector here, I'm going to go into the mirror option, we're going to flip that about centre, create a mirrored copy, and we're going to flip that horizontal. Let's close that down, and let's shift and select both of those, and we're going to join them up using this icon here. So now we'll be left with uh, a nice closed vector. I'd like to have a pendant that's going to sit at the bottom of our handle here. So let's just zoom in and then we can start to draw up the vectors that represent this sort of pendant that we're going to have resting at the bottom of our handle. So to create that shape I'm going to use the draw ellipse tool and I'm just going to simply snap to the centre point at the bottom there and I'm just going to pull out uh, the ellipse shape here and then I'm going to snap to the right hand side of the ellipse so you can see it's snapping to the node on the right hand side of that shape and I'm going to simply just create another shape here and then I'm going to take that vector and we're going to go over to mirror selected objects and I'm going to say flip about centre, create a mirrored copy, flip horizontal and then we can press close 
Okay, so we've got some shapes here. Now, what I'd like to do is use the two rail sweep tool to create uh, a shape using the same profile that we're going to use to model the handle with. So at the moment we've got a series of closed shapes so that's not going to work. So I just need to do a little bit of editing here. So I'm going to start by using the interactive vector trim option. Here I'm just going to cut into those areas that overlap and then I'm just going to come out of there and then we'll select that vector, go into node edit mode and I'm just going to cut this node here and cut this node here and then I'm just going to delete those bottom vectors using the delete key on the keyboard. Okay, So you can see I've got uh, the top area here although it's coming over a little bit so what I might do is just trim that a little bit more. To help me I'm going to take the handle vector, we're going to offset that inwards by say 0 0.05, let's offset that inwards, close that I'm going to go back to the interactive vector trim. I'm just going to trim that shape. I'm just going to delete those vectors there. Take that vector, delete that, delete that. Come out here and we'll just delete that offset the top there by pressing the delete key. We can see now that I have um, a vector that represents the top area of my pendant, so I'm happy with that. Now I'd like to create a mirrored copy that's going to sit below there. So to do that, what I'm going to do is just draw a line. I'm going to snap to the bottom of our handle here, draw a line, and using the left arrow key, I'm just going to move that over so it's roughly sat underneath the, the top side of my pendant. And then I'm going to take that top pendant, hold down shift, select that vector, we're going to go over to mirror selected objects and then I'm going to use this option to flip about line. Make sure create a mirrored copy is selected, flip about line, you can see it's created that uh, mirrored copy over that line that we had. So I can close that down, select that vector, I don't need that anymore so I can just delete that using the delete key and then I could take this vector using the up arrow key, I'm just going to nudge that up a little and there I have my two vector rails that represent my pendant shape. So let's just go and zoom to fit and so then I'd carry on working through all of the different shapes, so continuing with the main, looking at the face shapes, using all the different tools that we spoke about within this tutorial to create the vectors for all the other elements of our lion head door knocker. And so I'm just going to close this down and then we're going to look at the finished file. So we're going to open an existing file and in the line head drawing files project folder we're going to open the line vectors and press open. Okay, now if we just go to our layers tab you can see that I've already organized these vectors into uh, various different layers and this is just so that we can keep all of our 2D information organized. So if we just switch on the base shape, so you can see we've got uh, the face shapes, the ears that we created and that chin shape. And if we zoom in we also have this detailed area that represents uh, the sort of main or the sort of fur detail that's on the chin. And with these vectors you can see they're all just open individual vectors. We're going to look at using the extrude tool to model that. And you'll see that in the modeling tutorial. If I just press F on the keyboard, that's the shortcut to fit to screen. Uh, and then if we switch on the main, okay, so you can see we've got more vectors here. We've got lots of open vectors uh, that represent our rails for our main. And so we'll be looking at creating the cross sections that's going to run between these two vector rails for the main in the modeling exercise. Then we have the face vector, so if I just switch off the main and the base just so we can see that a little bit better and uh, we can zoom in here, you can see we've got uh, the same vector we used for the base shape. Okay, So if I switch that off you can see it's exactly the same and the reason for that is that it's important that we use the same one because when we come to machine the part we need to ensure that the face is going to fit perfectly on top of that base shape. So that's the reason why we use the same vector there. So that's the face shapes and we've got various shapes in here. A lot of these um, vectors 
were created with the intention of using the create shape tool except for the nose area here you can see we're working with uh, two lots of vectors uh, that are identical on the other side so they're mirrored vectors the reason for that is we're going to look at using the two rail sweep to model this nose area in and then you can see we've got three individual vectors here that represent the whiskers which we'll be looking at the extrude tool to model those with if we switch off the face and then switch on the handle we can see uh, those shapes that we created earlier so we've got the handle shape we're going to use the extrude tool and then we've got this uh, pendant at the bottom where we're going to use a two rail sweep again we'll model where we'll create the vectors for the cross sections in the modeling stage and then we have our keyway and so what I'd do here now is I'd save out all I'd save out this file uh, three different times so we've got one that represents the base shapes one that represents the face and one that will represent the handle so if we just go and do that now so I'm just going to switch on the base shapes and switch on the main shapes I'm going to go file save as and we're going to call this one lion base and then press save and then I'm going to switch off those base shapes switch on the face shape and we're going to save this one file save as lion face and then press save and then we'll switch off the face, switch on the handle save this one, save as, I'm going to call this one lion handle and then that way even though we have all of the vectors, all the same vectors in each one of those sessions um, we've just switched on the relevant layers for the particular part that we're going to model and it's just a good way for us to have all the vectors together and using this layer setup just means that we keep everything organized so let's just switch on all of those layers by using this light bulb option here go to the drawing tab and just use this option to zoom to fit so that concludes this tutorial where we've looked at the various tools that we can use with the software to create some of the key vectors that represent the lion head door knocker. We looked at how we can create good quality vectors and we spoke about how we intended on using these vectors in the modeling stage. Where the next tutorial will take these set of vectors and model each key part.